I'm Leo Phillips, host of This Must Be The Gig. We're a weekly podcast that documents everything about the world of live music. Speaking with choreographers, costume and set designers, the people who run beloved venues and festivals, and, of course, speaking with musicians about that one gig that changed their lives. Get your peek behind the curtain at consequenceofsound.net, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org, from Louisville Public Media. Consequence Podcast Network. And welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with... The audio interview series presented by WFPK, Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Hi to all the subscribers. Thank you for joining us uh, multiple times every single week. There's new interviews every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I appreciate you uh, you staying on board and keeping up with all of those. If you haven't given the series a rating, uh, left a review, even just said hi in the comment box, something you liked about the interview. Uh, you take that moment to do that as well. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. In fact, uh, grab your preferred listening device, head to where you get your podcast from, and type in Kyle Meredith with and subscribe, and we will deliver every single episode with all the love and care that we can muster straight into your ear. Again, multiple times every single week. We make it easy for you. We really do. I'm Kyle Meredith. And today I'll be talking with the band Chicago. In fact, founding member Lee Lochnane jumping on the line to talk about their latest record, Chicago Christmas 2019. This is, if you're counting, if you're keeping score, their fourth Christmas album. But unlike the previous three, which did crutch on a lot of the standards, this is nearly all original music, which really makes it a brand new Chicago record, but, you know, like a concept album. Lee and I are going to talk about all of that, so what draws them to holiday music, and what it's like to write in those parameters. He's going to tell me about writing with uh, John Durrell of The Ventures. They do a pair of tracks on here. We'll get the stories behind those. And of the two songs that aren't originals, one of those classics, What the World Needs Now is Love, finds them tackling the uh, Baccarat classic at a really contentious time in our present day. We'll see if that had anything to do with why Chicago changed to cover that one and after having so many eras and sounds throughout the years how they managed to keep that classic chicago sound both on the road and in the studio and from here the rock band with horns is going to be gearing up for a 2020 tour teaming up with rick springfield lee's also going to tell me all about that what they got planned in store and what we can expect discussing the brand new record chicago christmas it's kyle meredith with Chicago. All right, how you doing, Kyle? Really enjoying everything we're hearing from the uh, the latest Chicago record, this Chicago Christmas. Congrats on this. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. I mean, somewhere along the lines now, Chicago has become a Christmas band. I don't know if you ever saw this coming. Uh, what draws we you didn't. all? We, it took 25 years to get that first one out. <laughs> what, what keeps you coming back to the, uh, to the holiday style? Well, this year we were hoping to do just maybe a couple of bonus tracks to give to Rhino Records because they re- re-release the Christmas albums every year and they do quite well for them. And I was shocked when uh, the guys came in with 11 songs, eight of which are original. And uh, as we started recording, we did the entire album on the road. So on the tour bus and in hotel rooms and in three months we had an entire Christmas album and um, it's amazed me and my engineer Tim Jessup has uh, built the rig to the point where it is far and away better than it was the first time we did an album on the road which was Chicago 36. This album was even even better because more uh, equipment has been made available and built that takes the recording out of the computer into another piece of equipment and then back into the computer again to make it sound as if you recorded in a major studio at a console. And uh, the the quality is just amazing. It, it, beyond that, is there a big difference between producing... So, so there's the equipment, that's the technical side, but on the, I guess you'd say mm-hmm. the human side, I, I, is there a big difference between having everything everyone in that studio versus having everyone on the road in in this way? What I do is I just, you know, call somebody and see who's ready to come down and record. (laughs) And it is different that we're, you know, that, that everybody isn't there to run ideas off of. However, there's enough guys there to do exactly that. So, um, you know, the, the, the place is different, but the 
techniques are pretty much the same. Yeah. You know, you, you try something, you put it down there, and you uh, adjust it to make it work. With the idea of a, a holiday record like this, I, I would think, I mean, I guess that sets definite parameters on how you write a song. Does that make it easier or harder knowing that you sort of have a theme that you stick through? I mean, it's it's a concept record at the, uh, at the base of it, right? Pretty much, yeah. And as it turned out, with, uh, you know, eight original songs, it was more like recording a, a, a normal Chicago record because there are so many different styles, so many different genres that we use during the course of uh, each song. They all have their own personality. And uh, it was great watching the album come together. I, I, I was listening to a song like Bring My uh, Baby Back, and, and I thought, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, it's the idea that you could take any type of I Miss You song and just have Christmas lyrics dropped in, just like, you know, right. plug and play, and it suddenly becomes a Christmas song. Well, I'll tell you the other thing that's interesting about that song is I wrote the arrangement 20 years ago. Wow. And it never, it never had lyric or, or, uh, or melody until I sent it to John Durrell and said, hey, you know, we're doing a Christmas album. And, and John had already written uh, the, the A Merry Christmas, I Love You and sent that to me. And, and uh, he and I worked on uh, a, a different arrangement of that one as well, an up-tempo as well as the ballad. And uh, he said, yeah, sure, I'll give it a shot. And, and uh, a couple of days later, he sent me the, the, the song back, and it became a Christmas song. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> no, I, I love that because you could. It, 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 it's like, you know, I can write a song, and if I want it to be a Christmas song, I just sort of just have to plug that, that style in, that feel in, and there it suddenly becomes. Exactly. You paint another picture. <laughs> How long has your writing relationship with John gone back? Well, he wrote, uh, he and I wrote the, the Child's Prayer on the first Christmas album. Okay. Yeah, so that was in the 90s, right? Yeah, I love uh, I love what you guys do together. Uh, and in fact, those are a couple yeah. of my favorite tracks on this record. And I should also point out, you know, there is a great classic on there, What the World Needs Now. And, mm -hmm. you know, with, um, I mean, it, it, it says a lot. That song always says a lot. But with Christmas being a time where you can kind of write peace and love into songs, this seems like the right time. Was that sort of also on your mind? Like, this Christmas isn't the same as every Christmas. You know, there is a little bit of a hot-button political thing that sort of interjects itself whether you want to or not. Yeah, well, besides that, though, the world needs love anyway. Sure. And, and around Christmas time, you wonder why every day can't be like Christmas. When we were traveling around in the, uh, in the Macy's parade on the float, I didn't see one face that was not smiling. Hmm. Everybody had a good time. That not only everybody in the audience, everybody standing on the street, the cops, the FBI, everybody had smiles on their faces. And that's what we need. Absolutely. I love that version. I also point out, um, I feel like I do it all again it is like the sleeper classic on this record. It's become a little bit of a favorite of mine. Yeah, that's got its own style as well. Yeah. And um, under the Christmas moon. <laughs> with, <laughs> with so many uh, eras and sounds... Is there a challenge when you put the live show together that, that kind of threads everything together? We have always tried to figure out how to build a live set that starts off really big, and then you, know, you branch out into a couple of ballads and then bring it back up again. So it has a flow to it. So by the time you hit the end of the show, you can come to the final climax, as it were. Does that, uh, does that ring true in the studio as well? Because, again, when you have new members coming in, you know, a 50-year career, that you, every band has that if you're around that long, over 50, I should mm -hmm. say. It's, it's always amazing to me how these guys come in and still sound like classic Chicago. How does that happen? Well, first of all, the thing, the thing that we have that I don't think anybody else has is three of the original six guys that were in the room the first day yeah. are still traveling with the band and playing really great every night. Uh, you know, myself, Jimmy Panko, and Robert Lamb. So as the new guys come in, they have been listening to those songs all of their lives, and they can't wait to play them along with us. And what we always let them do is present their own personality while playing the song. So it still has the same arrangement, but their version of it. And uh, it's always, it's been working out. And the, 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 we have 10 guys working on, on this, on the stage at the same time now. And it's the best ensemble I think we have ever had since we started. Which is an incredible statement right there. Uh, I mean, it's, there's so many great moments there, but uh 
I, I love hearing how you all are energized again, and especially these past few oh, years. Yeah. It just seems like, you know, I mean, peaks and valleys as a band goes through in their career, but it does seem like there's been kind of an upswing again with the, uh, the attention on Chicago. I can think of a lot of worse things I could be doing with my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I know uh, after this Christmas thing, what t- touring next year is the big thing. Rick Springfield's on that bill as well. Do you, I mean, is this is there anything extra special planned this time around? Well, we haven't met Rick before, and uh, we I think uh, both uh, fan bases I think are going to be excited about seeing us on stage. And uh, it, normally, when we package. The benefit is that each artist gets other people to come in and see them that normally would not be seeing us or Rick. So we get to build our fan bases. Well, I'm definitely going to be out at some of those shows. Uh, going to try to catch one. Sounds good. Uh, Lee, it's been a, uh, an absolute pleasure talking to you. Again, uh, the Chicago Christmas, the new one, uh, is so much fun to listen to. Thank you for doing it, and uh, thank you for taking the time to talk. Thanks, Kyle. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. My thanks, Lee Lochnane of Chicago. The brand new Chicago record is called Chicago Christmas, and it's available now. And thanks to you for checking out the episode again. If you uh, haven't taken the time to subscribe to the series, right now is an excellent opportunity to do that. Anywhere you get your podcasts from, that does include iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, Podchaser, Acast, any of those places. Just to grab your preferred listening device, type in Kyle Meredith with and subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, hopefully you'll take the moment to uh, give the series a rating, leave a review or a comments in that section, uh, something you liked about the interview, whatever, whatever inspires you anyway. And after that, head to WFPK.org, where I do a show Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, and bonus interviews. Again, that's WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound has your music and film news. You can also find me at Twitter, at Kyle Meredith, Facebook slash Kyle Meredith, and that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith, and I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.